Tonight, we shoot our least favorite type of gun. A man named Langdon tries to change that. And freaking fireballs. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. The downside of sometimes making bold statements is that you have dug yourself into a corner. And I will allow this clip to illustrate that. There are a lot of people that like shotguns for home defense. Um, let me just start with this brief observation. I've never heard someone that I respect in the world of firearms say that shotguns are what I use for home defense. So maybe consider that. I've never heard like a respectable instructor or anything. Nope. Recommend that. But hey, that's just... Uh, again, just my experience. Just an observation. Oh, wait, that's your experience and my experience. Shock. Oh, okay. Now, that clip is a tough one for me to watch back. But being open to change and growth should be an important part of being a man. And with that said, let me ask the age-old question. And that question is... What weapon do you want for home defense? So you go through your options. You could grab your trusty sledgehammer. How about a tomahawk? Or a pistol? Maybe even a subgun. Perhaps a rifle. All viable options. For us, however, consistently, the answer has never been shotguns. But let's play a game. You break into a house, and on the other side of the door is a man with a shotgun. Specifically, a modified Beretta 1301 shooting 500 grains of shit your pants. Well, it turns out you've broken into Ernest Langdon's house. And you have chosen poorly. Okay, everyone, welcome to the show. And um, I'm gonna open up the show with this. First of all, I hope you enjoyed the uh, intro after dark, you know? But um, <laughs> it's like a, you know. You're proud of that, aren't you? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> um, but um, so here's what I'm gonna say. I, th I think as a man, we're all men here. And mm -hmm. I think that um, you, you have to own uh, your past and be able to go, hey, look, here's things that I've said before. And, and let's just get it out in the open because mm -hmm. everyone's afraid to, to own their stuff. So. I'll draw a correlation. Um, we put our foot in our mouth back in the day regarding MP5s. Mm -hmm. um, with virtually no time on MP5s <laughs> saying, this is an outdated bullshit gun, the bolt doesn't hold, hold open, and yada, 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 yada. Right? And, uh, and like even double down on it, right? And now, I love them. I have my third one being built right now. You know, it's like, it's truly one of like my all-time favorite guns. Mm -hmm. And we have been down a similar path with shotguns, right? <laughs> of basically saying mean things about shotguns, about shotgun owners, and how they're completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And yet we sit here with a shotgun master, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And um, we, we've done a few of these videos essentially around the premise of why shotguns? We've done like, why 300 blackout? Why Glocks? Why 1911s? You know, like what, why do these things matter? How are they, they relevant? Like what is their place in the world? And that's gonna largely be what we get into today with um, Ernest, but I guess, you know, that would be a chance, maybe, you who know, are you? Sna snapshot of yeah. who we yeah. are for people who don't know. Uh, Ernest Langdon, I run a, my wife and I run a small company called Langdon Tactical, where we do custom work, uh, primarily on handguns, uh, but we do a bunch of 1301 shotguns. Yeah. 
where we kind of reconfigure them. We take what is a tremendous shotgun and we kind of outfit it so that it's ready to go yeah. when you get it from us to, uh, to, to work on. So um, that's who I am. I mean, there's other things about me, obviously, but for the yes. purposes of this. Yes, that is you. That is me. <laughs> that is you. Okay. Jake, we're out here and a main piece of kit that you need on the range is a belt, a good belt. The belt that you happen to be taking off is made by none other than Sagara. What model of belt is that, Jake? This is the light inner Velcro belt. This is the one that I EDC every day. If you ever see either of us in public, you should challenge us. Be like, hey, bro, show me your belt. And I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll share a little bit of belly fur with it. I'll do it willingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to take it off. I'm not going to let you handle it. Right? Oh, I would. I'd let you. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, we rock the hell out of these things. They're great. Really the, love these. The great thing about that one, too, is my battle wagon or battle belt. Sagara calls their battle belt a battle wagon. Layers right on top of that. So whether I'm at the range or leaving the range to maybe go have dinner, hmm. I got two belts that cover me in both scenarios. Our code 1911 Syndicate saves you 10% off. I think a lot of people affiliate you with, um, you know, Beretta 92s. For, for me, I th really think of you as like, hey, he's Beretta 92 guy and shotgun guy. Mm -hmm. I know there's more to you than that. You're a human being with feelings and emotions <laughs> and, and PX4s and P30s and many things. But how did you sort of get exposed to shotguns in get to that place of going, hey, hang on, shotguns are kind of awesome. Like, like what, what was your background with shotguns that got oh, you to wow. this place? Um, it dates back pretty far. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I grew up dove hunting and stuff like that. So yeah. I grew up with shotguns. Um, but I think it really started when I was in the Marine Corps and I was teaching at the, the high-risk personnel program. Um, we had a shotgun portion during the class. It was part of the things that, that we taught to mm -hmm. uh, the people in the class. Um, so I had some good instruction there. I got to go to a bunch of schools where they taught shotgun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that was it. Um, I had, I went out, bought my own shotgun. I took shotgun classes from different places like Phil Singleton, I don't know if you mm -hmm. guys have heard of him, but mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a kind of a legend, uh, former SAS guy. He was a, um, Anyway, I won't diverge off of all that, but <clears throat> learned a lot from him and other guys. And so I've always kind of been a shotgun guy because I knew the capabilities of it. Mm -hmm. um, for us uh, as a company, what happened was we were already had the relationship with Beretta and the 1301 Tactical uh, was out, but it had a few things that it needed, if you will. Um, so having the relationship with Beretta, we got relationships with other companies and we started putting complete package guns together so that had all of the things that they mm -hmm. needed. Places to mount flashlights, places to attach slings, uh, more adjustability on the stock, all of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So the stock, I mean, I've been a shotgun guy for 40 years. Yeah, but uh, which is crazy, dude. So you started when you were three. Yeah, I'm older than 43. Right? Your math is off a little bit. <laughs> no, I don't know. It looks for you. We look like we would be the same age for that matter. So, whatever. Which means you would be 40, everyone. Okay. Yeah, which means you, you look terrible for being 40. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Fair, fair enough observation. Um, okay. So, you know, may, maybe on kind of like a broad strokes level, um, I think one of the things that's an interesting conversation or, around like why shotguns matter is um, <laughs> based on your state the ability mm -hmm. of what you can get based on capacity mm -hmm. yeah. elaborate yeah. yeah so yeah you may not you may not be able to get a high capacity ar15 in your house it may be a poor choice for you to be firing a a, a rifle in your apartment sure okay yeah um so there's a lot of reasons there may be you may make the decision that uh you know if i do have to use a gun for defense a you know an ar15 uh type you know mm -hmm. Rifle may not be the best choice if yep. I have to defend myself in my state because the DA might just throw me under the bus regardless sure. if I'm right or wrong, okay? Yep. And a shotgun uh, from that standpoint might be a, a bit more defendable. Um, but it also might be the issue of just straight up, I want something that is 100% devastating. If, I, if, I, if my life or my family life on the line, I don't want to have to shoot two or three times and then see if I'm effective. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the case of a shotgun, if you if you get a good hit, you're you're probably it's pretty down. much a wrap. Yeah, yeah, pretty much a wrap. Yeah, and we will we will talk about that. In yeah, a minute. well, actually, with that said, I think we'll take you to a chunk of um, footage that we did earlier on the range. So the point of this is to try to bring you guys up to speed of the advantages 
of the gauge. Yes, okay? please. The gauge. <laughs> the shotgun. So what we want to do is uh, talk a little bit about that. Now there's the big advantage of a shotgun, uh, in my opinion, is its payload, what it can shoot out it, and the broad variety of what it can shoot. So um, we, I jokingly say this can you can use this as a bird gun or an elephant gun. Uh, <laughs> so you can shoot anything from bird shot, you know, little pellets to knock dove out of the air, all the way up to big old slugs, slugs uh, 430, 440 grain projectiles at you know up to 1600 feet per second depending on Sheesh. how you want to load it so Holy shit. it's uh it can be a devastating uh payload you can also shoot breaching rounds and less lethal rounds and all of the other kind of things so the the difference in load that you can put in these is it's tremendous uh, so to get down that path the first thing let's go through the the most fundamental loads that we see for a shotgun okay uh, and talk about their capabilities now the first one uh, we're gonna talk about is birdshot. Uh, this is just a double A trap load, uh, ounce and an eighth of number eight. Okay, so, and this is a, a heavy one. So this one's got a little bit more powder behind it than normal. One of the things to understand is a lot of, there's two ends of this one. First of all, people will say, well, it's birdshot. You can't kill anybody with it. Well, that's not really true. Okay? Depends on how big the spread gets, Depends right? Depends on how far away they are from the muzzle. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna move up relatively close to the target. Okay. Yep. So if we get up here five-ish yards or so, uh, and we shoot a round of bird shot, the important thing to understand is that you're basically talking about almost a single projectile. Yeah, Okay. because yep. so of still, distance. Yeah, yeah, so this is bird shot here at five yards. Okay, <laughs> so most of that shot is still in a really tight column. Would you want to say this could be my defensive round because I don't have to worry about hurting the neighbors. I don't think that's a good thing to do because it's not nearly as devastating as you need something to be. Okay. okay. But you also can't act like it's not lethal. Yeah. That's not a less lethal round. You could definitely kill somebody with that. I mean, his face is hurting with... at the very oh, yeah. least. A little bit. Some of that is also the plastic wad. Sure. Right? It opens, takes the chunk with it. Which in, that'll in suck it. to get hit by too. You, you don't want that having to be dug out of you. Yeah. But if we just take a handful of steps back, okay, and we'll get an impact from the wad, uh, but we just get a few steps back and here we are at maybe 10-ish yards. And I'll just shoot full body. Okay, now Damn, walk up wow. and see what we got. Shit. All right, Jake, well, you uh, finished putting your belt on. We got some housekeeping, if you will. Yeah. And that is other ways to support the channel. So we have Patreon. Great thing about Patreon, we got a bunch of different packages that fit kind of your budget, but you get access to new swag, limited edition swag, like lighters, watches, etc. Syndicate events and or we had some Syndicate Patreon supporters out for filming. This yeah, week. you'll see them in a recent upcoming video. Pretty kinda awesome. Cool. Kind of cool. So if you're looking for another way to support the channel, Patreon is the place for you, especially if you like some cool, unique stuff that is not available to all viewers. Yep, absolutely. And then uh, last quick thing, 1911 Syndicate at its core has always been a real estate business. Hell, we only started the YouTube channel to try to get real estate clients, um, to be perfectly honest with you. So again, if you ever need help buying, selling a house, things like that, let us know. You just go to 1911syndicate.com, reach out to us through there. Uh, myself or someone else will get back to you and we appreciate the support. In all 50 states. Now that is the wad, that's a piece of plastic. And yes, it probably would penetrate, you know, below the surface, depending on where it hit. But this spread out dramatically. Dramatically. Right? And it's peppering the target. And these are, these aren't little BBs. These are smaller than BBs. They're yeah. number eight. So, but if you're trying to kill a small game, money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that, that hmm. definitely takes care of business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're talking about when we start talking about, you know, understanding the, the bird shot to start with. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step up from that is buckshot. We're going to do a regular buckshot first. Where's my, here we go. Now, this is a old school Super X uh, double lot buck, nine pelt. Okay. okay? Uh, so let's back up about where we were with the bird shot, okay? And we'll see a bit of a spread here with the nine pellet. I'm gonna shoot on the same target because you'll be able to tell what happened, okay? Jeez. Okay. Very devastating. 
there inside there are nine 32 caliber pellets that she took all at one time. 932, uh, about 1350 ish, something like that, with this particular Winchester load, right? Um, so feet per second. Yeah, feet per second. Yeah, 1350. So very lethal, right? This is the, kind of an old school deer uh, round, if you will. I mean, definitely take care of business. Um, the interesting thing to understand is with this type of buckshot, that's at 10 yards. I've already got a spread. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, they go, well, you know, that's what I want. The important piece to get across <coughs> is it doesn't clear out everything at the other side of the room. Right. You still got to aim this. Yes. Okay. So at 10 yards, that's still in here. I just can't level it out, point it in that direction, and, and it's going to take care of business. Well, and, and, and this is an argument that we've made. And this video, <laughs> And look, if we really cared about looking good on the internet, we wouldn't make this video. Because this video ma mostly makes us look bad on previous statements. Because one of the things that we've said is, an argument for shotguns is, you don't even need to point it, because the spread's just going to devastate anything at the end of a hallway. And we did this, and we were like, horseshit, it doesn't. You you do have to aim. Aim it. For inside the house, for, for all intents and purposes, it's a rifle. Sure. Cool. It, it's still a rifle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the difference being is, it's the most powerful rifle you could stick in your shoulder. Yeah. Because nothing else is shooting 400 plus grains of projectiles all at one time at 13, 1400 feet per second. Yeah. And, and this is gonna have way less over penetration issues mm. either through a torso or through building materials. Yeah, so just wall just, stucco. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, wall stucco, all the rest of the kind of stuff. Okay. But I would argue that this is way more lethal than probably any rifle anybody's keeping in their house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At, for, for a single shot. Correct. Okay. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. So that is the 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 issue there. Is it's not like I'm not going to have to. And if you've got a determined adversary, a truly determined adversary, and you talk to you guys with a five five six caliber gun, you may have to shoot them three, four, five times. Sure. Okay. I'm going to argue you don't have to shoot them through. You shot them nine times at once. At once, yeah. Well, and if you just do simple math, which I don't do math in public, and add up the grain weight, even that's a 77 grain 5.56, five, that's one round. Mm -hmm. You're getting X amount of grains, X amount of rounds to equal. 438 to 450, depending on the exact setup. But yeah. So just the math alone proves that that right. shakes out, right? Mm -hmm. so. Now, what's really interesting is we're going to back up again. Um, if you're concerned about uh the spread of the rounds and and flyers and projectiles that might go off and hit somebody because you know again the spread of the shotgun is an issue okay meaning that uh having this direction having a um nine pellets flying through the air okay if you're shooting at any distance and let depending on what you need this thing for right. we start backing up the distance then we get in the situation where that regular old buckshot, it still works, but the spread might get too great. And you got flyers now going off in places that you don't want. Right. And that's where the higher end loads, like this is federal flight control, okay? And this is a special wad that holds the, the pellets together. It's stacked in there better and it holds the pedal together in a tighter wad at greater distance. So let's back up to almost 20 here and we'll shoot on Let's shoot on the, the next one over and you're gonna see the difference of how tight the pattern can be with buckshot with the proper shotgun setup and the proper load, okay? All right, and that was me. I drifted a little right with it, but there's all nine pellets well within uh, what I would say. An A zone. Yeah, well, one, I had one off to the right. No, but, but I mean, me. if you were to shift that over, I mean, that's within yeah. an A zone. And there's your wad. It's really not really a big factor. But there's all nine pellets fairly close. And what I, you know, I, I pulled that shot a little on me. Um, but that's all in the A zone, all within an eight inch circle at 20 plus yards. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So and, now and you got still something. double op buck versus double op buck, just a concentration of mm -hmm. special wad. The pellets. It's a special wad, so you keep things a lot tighter. So if you lived in a rural area, or you had a, you know, 40 foot or, or 45 yard long hallway in your big house right from one end to the other yeah sounds this awesome might be a little bit better um of a deal now what we do from there is we go in and we'll switch over 
Now let's back up a little further. We don't have to back up that far. Same paper target. And we're gonna shoot a slug now. I'll shoot for a, see if I can pull a headshot here and not jerk it. See how this goes for me. Okay. Boy, you didn't throw it. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it down. definitely done. Okay. So now, at 20, 25 yards, um, ish, right from the target, we've got a one ounce projectile. It's uh, like 68 caliber, if I remember correctly. I should probably do the math on that again. Depends on the manufacturer. But that is a big gaping hole that takes care of everything that you could possibly want to take care of with now would we say with this particular round on this shot placement do you think that this adversary goes down uh forever okay <laughs> they are yeah. eliminated from the yeah. threat at this point yeah, yeah yeah they uh they are they drop like a sack of potatoes this would be my my and their is head there's... their head has probably seen better days. well the cavitation it, that it, that was would... called a canoe head yeah yes i'm sorry no, yes not Probably not good for public consumption, but if you've no, ever seen, if you've ever seen a, a canoe is dug out in the middle, yeah, it's that would be it's dug out in the middle. Probably, a, yeah, that's about right. That's a canoe head. Yeah, it's either a canoe head or a hair frisbee. That's the other thing that happens sometimes. Well, maybe oh. you could <laughs> demonstrate a slug at distance, because I have to admit I thought that that was pretty cool. <laughs> Thinking of shotguns as short range weapons. So what did we figure that was about one twenty? You think definitely got a hundred out of it. Huh? You definitely got a solid hundred there. Yeah, it's a, a solid hundred. And you can see the impact. I mean, it's high. It, it's Up high a zone. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so, I mean, that's a damn <clears throat> shotgun round of however many 450 grains or some shit at a hundred yards. Oh, that's, that's a deal breaker for him right there. Guaranteed. Right. And that is a, again, elephant gun, deer gun, big game doesn't matter what it is and I got a you know 100 plus yard shot um but the, now the dot helps a ton no doubt what round is this one ounce slug again okay. same thing same slug just iron sights yeah just the just beads looking down the yeah. rim stacking beads barely irons hit shit yep low low right yep but low right with, with a with a bit rip so oh, some base irons it's a lot harder because my beads are bigger than the target so i'm kind of sure. going yeah bang. <laughs> that's about right <laughs> i mean this shakes out right i mean this is the whole argument and i've taken a couple shotgun classes i don't know if you knew that jake <laughs> yeah he didn't know that but like i've always just been like ah, i still prefer a rifle but again with your argument bird buck big game elephant whatever one mm -hmm. platform to do it all and you can stack the loads however you want, right? Mm -hmm. You can move them around to do whatever the task would be at hand. Yeah. Um, because you're you're if you talk about a gun that's going to do a lot of different things for you, from a home defense standpoint, you're going to reach and grab something in the middle of the night. Um, it's a tremendous tool from yeah. that standpoint. Okay. Because from a from a devastation standpoint, <clears throat> unless you the you know, you've got a onslaught of a lot of people coming in your house, you're gonna be able to take care of business with that one gun and whatever you've got on the gun. Yeah, and I think part of the argument that I've made uh, as I own my, my past verbiage is that shotguns, here's part of where I've had an issue, right? Is that people, is not so much with shotguns. It's the fact that shotguns seem to be a, de facto argument of you can be a dummy with no training and Bullshit. a shotgun's your home to fit. And that's where Nobody's, I've resided. Yeah. It's like, that does require that. you to be trained. It, well, it, it does. And I think it's, it, you you still have to be responsible. It doesn't take out everything in, in the uh, hallway. You still need to aim it for all intents and purposes. You have to use it like a rifle indoors. Um, but from a capacity standpoint, I mean, from a lethality standpoint it's way in front of any rifle that would be acceptable for home defense sure. yeah like you know like oh well, my 338 lapua is more about, okay yeah you're relax yeah yeah he's not now two miles away he's yeah, in your house he's in right? your house right i mean that's what jake said is what working behind a gun counter forever 
I heard like, oh, I'm getting this for my daughter because she doesn't even have to point or shoot and she doesn't even have to train. Yeah. And I'm like, what? No. Is that gonna, one, hold up in court? Yeah, sure. Oh, I just closed my eyes and sent it. Like, I'm sorry, you're going to prison, right? But two, you do need training and some skill and some accuracy to make it an effective weapon. It's not point and shoot. Couple things that we're, we're gonna talk about shotgun um, that I think are really, really important. If you're going to have a shotgun that is something that you're gonna be using for defense, there are two huge factors there, okay? Um, home defense gun, it needs two things, 100%. It needs a source of ammo. You've gotta have ammo on the gun because you're probably gonna be butt naked when you grab this thing. Awesome. So your battle belt <laughs> is not gonna be there for you to be doing reloads and yeah. grabbing your quad loads and all the other kind of stuff. What, Grab what's, some. what's on the gun is what you got, okay? Um, that's one. Number two is it needs to have a light on it. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Because handheld flashlight techniques with the shotgun are extremely difficult. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Doesn't even seem possible. Uh, it, it is, but it's not easy. Not great. Okay? Um, so a light is super, super important from that standpoint. So those are two huge factors on there. I love dots on shotguns. Mm -hmm. We used to not to because we're like, that's just sacrilege. But uh, it takes away of the, a lot of the lighting condition issues or sure. vision focus issues. All the things that make dots great on handguns, they're as good or better on a shotgun. On a shotgun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really important. Uh, another factor people need to understand is talking about one of the capabilities that a shot, most shotguns have, and that is the choke. Having a choke tube in there allows you the options. And the example that I would give is most tactical shotguns are gonna be set up with a cylinder bore choke. So there's almost no choke basically. Yeah. Um, but if it's a shotgun that you wanna use for multiple things, having different chokes can increase the capabilities of the gun. Okay, yeah. can you define choke? For yeah, do you know what that is? Know? So I can, very, that's I, I'm, I'm genuinely so, asking. Yeah, yeah. I, it's been a minute since I've been okay. done a shotgun okay. path before. So, um, without doing math and talking about numbers, uh, this is a light modified choke, but basically this particular one is made so that I can screw it into the gun. Okay. Most of the 1301s we sell have a uh, screw in choke as well, but basically it's the last few inches of the barrel, depending on the manufacturer of the shotgun and the way that you set it up, the last few inches of the barrel, um, and the, it's like the, <coughs> this, mm -hmm. and basically it compresses that shot column as it comes out of mm. the, uh, the, the tube. Keep and the grip tight. It, yeah. Gotcha. So I can change that choke to increase the density of how tight the pattern is. So I can throw a, uh, a different choke in here and then get a much tighter pattern. So let's say I'm gonna shoot some type of small game with this and I want my bird shot to be tighter or I wanna go turkey hunting. I can mm -hmm. put a full extra full choke in there. I can keep my shot column really tight so I can focus all those pellets into a small area, or I can extend the range at which the pellets will stay in a tight area and still be lethal. Um, so that's what a choke uh, does for you. And that's an important thing to understand uh, a capability wise with your shotgun. Uh, again, most tactical shotguns or home defense shotguns are gonna have a cylinder choke in it, which means no compression of the shot column, because the idea is that I'm actually trying to get a little bit of spread sure. with my pellets. Um, but if you were gonna take that same shotgun, it's like, oh, I'm gonna go use it to do this now. Yeah. You can change that choke and make it more capable. Yeah. Right? Well, while we're kind of down this path, because we were gonna talk about this anyway, you know, you, you covered a lot of it, but you know, configuration of your shotgun and why you're doing things the way that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so which one of these is your personal gun? Well, they're technically well, all my Well, I guess they all guns. are, yeah. Um, um, the one this set up is most the one that is kept loaded right mm -hmm. now in the house. Uh, so this one's got a light on it. If you notice all my, all my screw points are witness, uh, witness mark. Mm -hmm. Actually, I had to go back and tighten these up because shotguns have a fair amount of recoil and vibration when you shoot them. Sure. Um, and so anything that you have connected, you need to be checking on a regular basis and witness marks help you know that both yeah. things are coming out of tight. Yep. Uh, cause once they get loose, you don't want to keep shooting the shotgun cause you'll just tear things up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, again, shells on the side. This is the way this one's kept set up is the full tube, which is seven rounds in the tube and buckshot uh, here. And then I have two slugs normally here. I'd have them facing in opposite directions. Yeah. Cause when I'm loading the shotgun, I'm pulling from the front and shoving into the tube. If I'm gonna load a shotgun shell, it's probably gonna be a single shell. So it's gonna be what they call a select slug. Or you mean a slug? 
A slug. Yeah, Did yeah. I say what I say? Shotgun shell. Yeah. yeah. If I'm going to shoot a slug, it's probably going to be loaded into the chamber by itself. Right. Not. Um, already not in the gonna, tube. Already and in and the you tube. don't run because I said, I mean, uh, uh, again, uh, newbie shotgun, right? Mm -hmm. So so I'm asking newbie questions here. Um, you know, I see people run the the one basically in line with the bore Mass shell saber. on this Mass side. Saber, I got it on the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's the, you know, so, or, or your take on that, I guess? Um, it's not a bad idea. Um, I've This one's set up because it's a legit match saver, uh, if you will. So you could load whatever you wanted to in here. I'm gonna throw it in here to show you basically the way it works. Um, but basically the idea is I've run my gun dry. Right. Okay. Um, which I, you don't want to do with a shotgun if you can help it. But basically I can take this shell, rub it into the chamber and I got a, I yeah. got a round in the chamber now. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a fairly gross motor skill to do. I come up, push the whole shell into the chamber. And if I've got it lined up, it lines up right into the chamber. And then as soon as I get there, I just hit my bolt release and mount that around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not just a, an Instagram gimmick, if you nope. will. Ah, yeah. I would say no. Yeah. Um, it's not. A lot of guys are putting them on the tactical shotguns now. I've seen them on some law enforcement shotguns. Because if it, if you run this thing dry, you know, it's that. There's other people that would argue that that is a great place for um, if you had a special purpose round like a slug that you wanted to use. Sure. I wouldn't ever, I'll say ever, never say never, right? I mean, those kind of things. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't mix and match like breaching rounds with real rounds or less lethal rounds with a real shotgun. That's, that, that could be pretty disastrous. One of the unique things about the 1301 is that it doesn't drop a shell on the carrier when I cycle the ball. Okay. Um, and what that means, if someone picks the gun, like typically the way I leave it is the tube loaded, <coughs> nothing in the chamber, nothing on the carrier. And a lot of guys will say, put one on the carrier and that way it's faster and you know, go slow and I got more rounds. But the idea here is this gun is pre-positioned somewhere. So if someone picks it up, well, yep. well, what the hell? Yeah, doesn't, we're good. It doesn't chamber around, doesn't go bang. If they if they start fucking with it, eventually it's gonna go. Can I say that on you? Yeah. Okay. On our channel, you can. Yeah. So what happens is when I pull the trigger, so let's say I pick the shotgun up, I got two choices. I need to get this thing into action. I can hit the carrier release button here on the bottom and that'll dump a shell. Or if I lose my mind and I come up and I pull the trigger, when I pull the trigger, it's going to dump that shell oh. into the carrier. And then okay? you just rack it. And then I can rack and put it around it. Interesting. Okay. okay. But why that is important with this particular shotgun is if I say, oh shit, I need to take a slug shot. Okay. So I got two choices. I can either put one into the tube, fire a shell, and then I'll load it. Or if I want to be very selective, I can pull that to the rear, put that shell in place, and it goes into the chamber. So now sure. I have a slug in the chamber, yep. but I didn't eject one onto the round. And most, a lot of semi-autos and most pump shotguns, when you cycle it, it automatically dumps one onto the carrier and runs it through there. So doing a select slug drill is a little bit more difficult than with a shotgun like this. Mm. Very good. Does that make sense? It mm -hmm. does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it, it has, you know, it has some benefits. I'm gonna just unload it the rest of the way now um, from that standpoint couple Very things cool. to understand. So again, I keep it loaded, seven rounds in the tube, nothing in the chamber. And you know, the reason for that is I don't want to be unloading it and unloaded. If I pick, once you pick the gun up, it's kind of like an AR, right? Once you pick the gun up and it's in your possession, you load it. Yeah, charge right? it. Right? Yeah. You charge it, it's ready to rock. So the important thing with a shotgun is keeping it loaded. The disadvantage of a shotgun, if there is one, is the fact that you've got a relatively low capacity here. Lots of lethality, but you're looking at seven or eight rounds in the tube, depending on what you have for a shotgun. It may be only five rounds, depending on what your configuration is. If you're not shooting, you should be loading the shotgun. So if you shoot one, you load one. If you shoot two, you load two, right? And the loading process is typically off the side saddle. So we pull that shell out of the bottom and we insert it into. So those. this process is the most difficult part uh, it's from a weapons handling standpoint, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so those, those, that is important and that's what you're primarily doing. So if you're up here on the line and you're shooting, um, it, there's something to be said for doing like tube dumps where you just do, 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 and learning to control the gun. Um, but the reality is you should probably shoot one, load, load. one, shoot two, 
load two and constantly be feeding the gun mm -hmm. so that you keep that capacity of the gun up. Right. That's what that's what your most of your time should be done on. Yeah. The last thing uh, that you want to be uh, skilled at doing as well, um, and I know we we played with the uh, uh, we played with the um, match saver just a minute ago, but if I do run the gun dry. Uh, I need to get the gun back up as quickly as possible. So I don't worry about loading the tube at this point. I need to get around in the chamber as soon as possible. So when we grab that shell, there's a, several different ways to do it. You can come over the top, but for most people, uh, I recommend them coming under the bottom. So you're cupping it in your hand like this, and you're coming in and you're throwing that shell into the chamber, and then you're going for there. If you're a lefty- I was just gonna ask this. Yeah, if you're a lefty, um, you could argue that shotguns are set up uh, better for left-handed people, okay? So you're gonna pull the shell out and it's right there at the side and put the shell right in there because you're looking at it. Whereas I am, it's over here and I'm doing one of these numbers. You're doing it from this direction. Some of the best pump shotgun shooters I've ever met were lefties because they could run, everything's right here in front of their face. You're the first person that said something nice about my people ever. <laughs> Um, We're abused, think, and uh, we know it. I think it's Bill Blower says that uh, the uh, uh, lefties are genetically superior for running shotguns. Because shotguns are all really, everybody's like, oh, I want a left-handed shotgun. It's like, they're all left-handed. I Most like of Bill. Them. Bill's yeah. my kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Bill. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, obviously, you guys, um, you know, work on the guns, of course. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on the Langdon side of house, like, we take a base. 1301, what are we doing to it? Uh, so we take the 1301, uh, the, the most important configurations we do is we change the four end. Uh, we put a Magpul Zukov four end on it. Uh, so we have an adapter, gg and g makes our adapter that allows us uh, to put the four end onto the shotgun. And that Zukov four end gives you M-lock mounting points so that you can put swing swivels and flashlights and all of those things on the front of the gun. Mm -hmm. And then we also, replace the stock on the gun. So we have you know, two configurations. This is a chisel machining stock, uh, which is way more adjustable uh, than the other one. And so it's adjustable for length of pull, a lot of adjustability. You can move the stock itself up and down as okay, well as say, the cheek that a, pad up and down. Is that a cheek riser? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the cheek riser, but the, the recoil pad itself, you can actually oh, adjust okay. its position on the right stock right. Cool. to fit you. And you have multiple points for sling swivels. Um, you can put shells on the side, so there's a quiver that you can mount on the side so that you can mount uh, more ammunition onto the gun, so that's important. And it also has a, mm -hmm. a mount for an optic yeah, <coughs> very cool. on the stock itself, and it puts it further to the rear, which opens up the receiver of the gun, as well as gets the optic a little closer to your eye, gives you a better field of view. Mm. And then of course the Magpul stock, which is a, a great stock as well, and again, adapter for a Mossberg stock to go in here. So again, I have adjustable length of pull. I have a little bit more vertical forward grip. So short stock in the gun is a little easier. Easier. And we have side saddle options. Uh, we have different uh, optic mount options that you can use on there. And of course, this is, shows you the configuration of a, lout, a light mounted onto the four inch. So is that, that's typically how you would run a light, you know, based on your experience? In terms of um, pressure pad being on, on your side of the so gun? So I or? like, uh, I've done both. Um, normally I like using a manual tail activation cap. on a rifle because it 100% it kind of always works. Tail Fair. caps and wires sometimes make me nervous. But pushing on a button on a shotgun when this thing starts kicking around can get quite painful. Mm. Uh, and so having oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. pressure yeah. pad uh, is kind of nice. So this is a, the current configuration I'm running. This is a Streamlight. It could be a Surefire Scout, whatever your, yeah. your preference would be there. But again, M-Lock piece of pick rail, yeah. mount your light on it. Uh, and now it's further towards the end of the shotgun, yeah. but it's within reach. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then, so, I mean, just from a training perspective, so the pressure pad that's on the other side, so you're basically squeezing, squeezing it to activate it? Yeah, you can squeeze it. I think I've got this one turned off right now because it's uh it's in care it's in go in the bag mode so that it doesn't yeah, turn yeah. itself on and yeah in the bag and melt things which they will uh so you can push it with your thumb okay and turn it on uh you can also just squeeze it with your your hand when you're grabbing the barrel and then this one has a constant on constant on if you want to just turn it on and let it run it depends on what your 
your situation might sure. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that's not going to heat up to where you're C clamping and burning your thumb until you shoot a certain amount of rounds. So that's yeah, why that, you, that still you've works. You've shot this thing quite a bit if this yeah. thing's burning your thumb. Yeah. It will. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot. Uh, it's a so bad night in the house. So if you're training with a gun, you're going to want to have a glove on. Yeah. Uh, but if you're emptying your tube in your house, you're probably going to be okay. And burning your thumb is might not be at the top of your list of problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't get red hot. It I just, just brought it hot. up because someone might say, like, yeah. "Hey, if you see clamp a shotgun, you're going to burn your hand." Not so much. Yeah, if you if you shoot enough, you will. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you get on the range and you start training and cranking some rounds down range, the barrel's going to get hot. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. But it's a it's a relatively low capacity gun. Sure. Um, and considering that that a round of quality buckshot should take care of a single person. Yeah. So if I've got seven rounds in the tube, how many people are coming into my house? Hopefully not seven, man. Yeah. And I got another six on the side saddle. And then another five on the and rear. On, right? And if I'm running this stock, I got another five over here. What did I, I'm moved to the wrong neighborhood. You're in the, yeah. you're in the apocalypse at I this point. I probably should yeah, have yeah. grabbed a rifle. It's the walking dead <laughs> at this point. I mean, point. at that point, yeah. 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 Yeah, we but got, it, we got problems. Yeah. Um, anything <laughs> internally that you guys do, or is it mostly? We do a uh, we do a trigger job on the trigger group. Um, the trigger on the guns is really nice to start with, so it's not like it needs to be a much better. But I think more than anything else, it makes the trigger more consistent mm -hmm. um, and repeatable. So it's a little bit lighter, maybe a half a pound. It's not dramatic. I mean, it's not going to turn into a you know a three pound match trigger. Um, yeah, but a little, little wait, dicey. Yeah. yeah, it's a on a shotgun. You're probably not needing to deal with a you know that kind of trigger, yeah. but um, it does improve it uh, quite a bit. I mean, it's it's a noticeable difference, um, but it doesn't get it. I mean, it's not a quote hair trigger. It's just an improvement in what we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah no doubt. So last, like last little thing that we're going to get into as far as like accessories. Uh, what's your stance on a sling on a shotgun? Yay, nay, indifferent? Okay, so um, I think uh, there is a time and a place for a sling on a shotgun. Okay. Uh, but typically you're talking about patrol work or a military guy or something. So the real reason to have slings on any gun is because you're living with the gun. Meaning it's with you when I'm eating lunch and I'm eating dinner using the restroom and I'm using the restroom yeah. and I'm climbing ladders and anything else like that. That's the main purpose of a sling. We've kind of lost context ever. And you know, these in the tactical world where everybody wants to transition. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if I grab this in the middle of the night, I'm probably naked. I ain't transitioning to anything because <laughs> yeah. there's nothing to grab. So if this thing stops working or I run out of ammunition, I'd better be beating feet to somewhere else. You get mm -hmm. my point? Yeah. So the sling is not really, in my opinion, necessary. It's another thing that gets caught on things mm -hmm. when I'm trying to move and do things. And things so could be so loosely interpreted there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just, I mean, it depends well, too. Yeah. Uh, also, fun fact of the day, Ernest sleeps naked. So, you know, just, yeah. you know, for any of the fans out there, you know, just, just let not you know. Not everyone does. So that's oh, nice to know, I guess. Amazing. Yeah. And he stays in shape, so he's not afraid to show it off to intruders. <laughs> if an intruder comes in, be like, that motherfucker's in shape. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sorry, Amy, watching this. Um, she knows he's in shape. Better. She's laughing. <laughs> She's laughing. Um, the, uh, so the, I don't think a sling is necessary for a gun that I am keeping staged for me to grab in the middle of the night. Because yeah, it's yeah. just one more thing to get caught on something. Yeah. Uh, Especially so in context, low light, no light, too. Yeah. Exactly. Can't really see what I'm doing. No. Yeah. Door handles can be horrible things when yeah. you're running in and around your house. And that would be the, like one of the most common things that I think I've yeah. caught things yeah. on. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, very cool. Guys, hope you enjoyed learning about shotguns today. Um, we enjoyed it. Thanks for Ernest and the whole crew uh, coming out there. We're not even whole crew, really, Ernest. Just um, Ernest. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, final thanks to uh, Firearms Legal Protection. So you guys, have, hey, Finn, let's not eat the uh, animal's carcass. <laughs> Got an animal spine down there that he seems to be intrigued by. Um, so... Final thanks to FLP. Um, they are doing a giveaway. That's Firearms Illegal Protection. They've sponsored our channel for probably like a year and a half now. Oh. Um, so basically, hey, I don't want to get this wrong because it's a giveaway and it's on the internet. So it's three months of the individual basic plan. That gets you coverage in your state, uncapped attorney fees, um, covers all legal weapons, attorney hotline. 
the basics, right? Here's what you do. You click on the link that's in the uh, video description for the FLP, right? So you just click on that. It'll take you on our little homepage there. And then you just click on the little button that says you enter the giveaway. Plug in your, your whatever details it asked you for. It won't be too crazy. Everyone relax. Um, and you got 48 hours to do that after this video comes out. This video is probably out at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, for those of you that don't know that that's a real time zone, on a Friday. So you got until Sunday, 2 p.m. MST to get in there. Winner will be randomly drawn. Someone from FLP will reach out. If anyone yep. else reaches out, like in a YouTube comment, and they're like, text this number for free Glock and gift card, um, please do not click on that. That would not be us or anyone from FLP. They will reach out directly. So we appreciate the support. Again, hope you guys enjoyed learning about shotguns from the man, Ernest Langdon. And we'll see you guys next week.